here now. Here we are. This is uh, myself, uh, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld, uh, speaking on behalf of the Jewish Socialist Bund, uh, and introducing again to everyone Steve Struggle, veteran of the uh, Black Nations Liberation Struggle in the so-called United States of America. Thank you. That was a very nice introduction. Uh, as always, an honor and pleasure to be with you, Abraham. So true, too. You know, you're a consistent, uh, strong, uh, militant uh, spokesperson <laughs> of the Black liberation struggle of the Black nation. And uh, looking forward to uh, the role that uh, <clears throat> the Black liberation struggle will have in the North American revolution, because we need a uh, united front of all the minorities in order to overcome the um, majority uh, colonializer influence in the U.S., first of all, the Anglo-Saxon influence and then the German-American influence as well, which are represented by each of the major uh, bourgeois parties, it would seem now. So the uh, task is to uh, break through that wall of impermeable bourgeois lies and manipulation and media manufacturing of opinions that people are beginning to see through now, especially the student movement, which is uh, continuing and growing. Harvard had a thousand graduates, you know, who walked out on the administration there. Incredible. It is incredible. And it's something that the United States ruling class and its institutions and its media did not expect. They could never in their wildest dreams have thought, wow, our support for the attack on the Palestinians in the Gaza and the West Bank will result in a large student movement in our country and around the world. They could never have ex expected it. And it shows you, the. it shows to me, the one of the weaknesses of their, of how they think is they never, they never, well, usually, they overlook the obvious. There's someone within their borders which is going to oppose what they do. It might not always happen. There was, there hasn't been really much opposition from the progressive or left to the U.S. NATO war in Ukraine. There really hasn't been, and that's been a, a real tragedy. But the saving grace is that when it came to the Israeli and the Zionist attack on Palestine as of October 7, there has been a groundswell of student student support for the Palestinians and growing support within organized labor for Palestinian for the Palestinian cause. And the United States could never have they could never have expected it. And that's why they've been so brutal and so spontaneous and so vicious in their opposition, because a smart imperialist would have planned, okay, this is going to happen. We'll just do this. No, they have to resort to terror and vigilantism and um, expulsion from universities and defamation and slander in order to put the opposition off its on its heels, but it hasn't stopped the opposition from growing. It hasn't stopped, and I think that's a great thing. Yeah, yeah. I, especially with students, you know, from elite institutions who will <clears throat> basically, you know, putting their careers on the line, betting their careers that uh, they are telling the truth and that the administration are are trying to conceal the truth from the uh, students themselves in the university. It's not really a university either, you know, it's just a private corporation, these things that call themselves, you know, the Ivy League institutions of enlightenment and democracy and liberalism. They're just a corporation there out to produce a product. And the product is, you know, functionary who can service, you know, the uh, U.S. state in one form or another, like uh, Condoleezza Rice, perfect example of a political science professor taken to be the spokesperson for the U.S. imperial regime. What a waste of a life, you know, like what a waste of an intellect, really. 
That's, 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 that's true. No, that's that's, yeah. that's very true. Uh, and 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 there are others, but Doctor Rice does stand out. Um, yeah, uh, it, yeah. she does stand out, and she's at that institution, Stanford. I mean, a hallmark of intellectual. Uh, I don't know what to call Stanford, actually, because some people, some some people, you, if you mention Stanford, they they, they just kind of drop in awe. But I've seen them involved in some very shady things, and it's not it's not well it's not all about the school, it's not only about the reputation for research. Um, there's a lot that goes on that isn't too cool. And one my my statement to you would be: Was there an encampment on Stanford? And if not, why? Oh yes, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I I have no idea. I haven't, I haven't heard of one. I have to assume there wasn't one. Uh, of course, assumption isn't a good way of making this, making reaching conclusions. But we certainly we heard from no we heard of no student in the rest of Stanford, or perhaps it was just quelched or kept silent. Who knows? Uh, um. Uh, but there's 150 universities in the United States already, you know, like who are who have encampments and protest camps of one sort or another. It reminds mm -hmm. me of the peace camp protest camp that I had on Parliament Hill in Ottawa between uh, 1983 and 1985 against the U.S. cruise missile being introduced into Canada for testing, supposedly, but in a scenario that indicated that. Uh, <clears throat> This uh, cruise, a uh, nuclear capable cruise missile, was being tested flying north uh, in Alberta towards the North Pole, presumably as a, as a scenario of uh, practicing a first strike against the USSR at the time. And we won that struggle. You know, cruise missile is banned from Canada now. And the factory that nice. uh, was manufacturing the guidance system in Toronto was protested against. And finally, there was a direct action group from Vancouver that went and <clears throat> blew away the front wall and shut down the factory. So that uh, contract never came back. So that settled uh, that. It certainly did. Wow, I had no idea. Uh, you know, that's not, uh, you know, featured in, in the history, but it, it certainly should, made it history certainly in Canada. Wow, no idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, the U.S. universities, you know, these uh, private corporations, <laughs> they're trying to sue. They're trying to get their students arrested for trespassing on private property. <laughs> what an expose of the bankruptcy of of uh, uh, of uh, U.S. Uh, academia, non-existent academia. And it's known, you know, that uh, U.S. Uh, uh, academic standards are basically, you know, uh, functional for the purposes of uh building careers uh, and not much else uh, that's pretty much the, it. uh level of academic you know uh, scholarship in the united states uh, certainly doesn't meet uh, international standards and is known to be so as well so so much for the ivy league and their tuition fees what do they pay for tuition uh, there it's 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 outrageous yeah believe me it's it's nothing to I mean, the amount of money you pay to go to one of those schools is just like, oh my goodness, what are you paying the money for? Yeah. It's so it's so it's it's so much money that to me you're saying if you go here and you graduate, we are ensuring you have a successful life in some career. That's the only way you can pay that kind of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money. I have no idea how much it costs, but it's got to be out. It's outlandish. Yeah, something <laughs> I mean, like fifty thousand or ninety thousand yeah, a year. A year. Yeah. A year. A year. Yeah. I mean, it's just like you know. I don't know. It's just yeah. Too much. It's too. It's 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 nothing to. Um. The average working man of whatever ethnicity the United States can't can afford it. <laughs> and, 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 working and, and, man, forget it. Working class is out of it, you know. Like for that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, but yeah. 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 Um, you know, there's been some exposés about what happened at UCLA. Um, I ran across some work in the in the um 
gray zone. And I have a report to share with you, which maybe we can share, out, share with our viewers next week. Some interviews with the people at UCLA. I just came across that this morning. The gray zone article lists names um, of people who were participants, who were fundraisers. Um, and I found out that the that the use that the LAPD has charged activists with something like conspiracy to steal or commit theft on the campus by by sitting in. It's some outrageous <laughs> uh, charge, and they only had one person who was exposed by CNN be charged with anything on the other side. I knew that was going to happen with LAPD. They would have to arrest the protesters. They have to arrest the activists. They have to arrest the anti-imperialists. That is their purpose as a police department. Shikani Sheriff's, LAPD, FBI, uh, Homeland Security, they will arrest our side. The other side, eh, 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 they, they didn't do it. They were just there. You know, but the CNN, the CNN story that came out, this one young man, an 18 year old from an 18 year old or 17 year old from Beverly Hills, California, he goes to high school there. They went to the they went to the house. They found the house, and and interviewed the mom. And after that, the police, I mean, begrudgingly made an arrest for something. So we're seeing also in these protests around, at least that we know in California, and I would love to get more reports from around the country. What is exactly happening? To the people who who were arrested, are the charges dropped? I know we know that in um, NYU students who were detained or cited by the university have to write a letter of apology. They have to you know to stay in school. They have to write some letter that that wasn't me. I don't believe in this protest. Essentially, denounce what they did in order to re retain their status as, as students. Yes. Wow. I'm not sure what's happening at other schools, you know, but that's what's yeah. happened there. Also, yeah. um, I don't know if you're aware that the United Auto Workers have a graduate student division, and they are very active in California campuses. They had a strike earlier in the year, a lot wow. last year, a strike, a student strike, in which they got some, some contractual adjustments to their pay and benefits. So they have been waging a political strike against what happened at UCLA. They had, a, they had demonstrations and a strike at UC Santa Cruz. That's at the Monterey Peninsula area, right below the San Francisco Bay area. Um, last week and up to today, and there'll be a strike at UCLA on, on Tuesday. So that movement is still going strong. It's almost funny, you know, like how the police and the repressive authorities try to invent some sort of uh, excuse, you know, for arresting protesters. Yes. In my case, they they actually passed a uh, a motion in the cabinet of the government of Canada to the Public Works Act, adding a clause referring to nuisances and called the nuisance regulation. And this regulation was invented just for me to get rid of the peace camp there against cruise missile testing. And so we defended ourselves and eventually made an appeal to the Federal Court of of Canada, and we won, you know, that was struck down. Uh, we didn't get, you know, to have a, a tent overnight, but we were guaranteed that we could put up a literature table and without it being taken away by the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. So basically we won that struggle. But nuisance, sure. you know, nuisance regulation, you know, like really, I mean, that's what they call a protest. You know, they just changed the name of it, you know, in order to destroy all the democratic rights that are guaranteed for citizens you know they just use change a phrase that's it that's all you know and then all of a sudden it's all gone and it's the police who do that you know it's you know the police who assume you know the power of the state yes 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 i i, I pulled up the article the, the letter i got from about the gray zone and it says that the um la area police have arrested droves of students protesting Israel's U.S. black genocide in Gaza, accusing over 40 students and, and journalists of conspiracy to commit burglary for attempting to sit in on school, school grounds. 
So <laughs> conspiracy to commit burglary for having a sit in. Conspiracy to commit burglary. I've never heard of that before. Well, they're making it do. They make it up as they go along, man. Really, especially in California, especially in Los Angeles, such uh -huh. a hot of police, military intelligence. Um, um, uh, uh, just they do what they want. If people talk about other parts of the state, the brutality is greater here. The connection with the Zionist uh, intelligence agencies is is um greater is greater there is here, not here. Greater there. Um, I would not be surprised if, if Mossad had an office in LA tied to some um some ostensible Jewish organization. They're really organized. The LAPD has always had a very vicious metro division, a paramilitary a paramilitary um wing of the police are the there is a paramilitary wing of the police department here called the Metro Squad. They've been around for decades. And they are trained like Green Berets. So you have that kind of places. When you have a place like that, and then you have social protests, they they allow people to get their butts to get beaten and assaulted. And then they want to charge the people who were who 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 were beaten. That's how they run the game. So our our viewers need to be real need to remember that if you think America is about democracy, if you think America is about about getting rich, if you think America is about freedom for uh, expressing your opinion, please think again. That's not what's happening here. No, it's not. It's In not. terms of uh, the uh, upcoming American presidential election, have you seen the uh, the report, the uh, the the poll done of the uh, Arab Americans who are supporting Jill Stein, Doctor Jill Stein, twenty five percent. Good. And supporting uh, Dr. Cornell West at about 23%. And <laughs> as far as Biden is concerned, he gets like 5%, and uh, Trump gets 3% or something. It's a, you know, a very interesting phenomenon, you know, that uh, predicts, you know, I think what the uh, future poll results will be in the American politics once. Uh, um, the uh, bourgeois parties have exposed themselves, you know, for being one anti-democratic, two for waging uh, unnecessary wars and and wasting resources of uh, of uh, American people who could otherwise be better served by having an infrastructure, a school system, and a social welfare system that actually services you know human needs instead of uh, some imperialist war here or there or anywhere, really. Well, I, 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 one of the, one of the I just want to comment on about that that statement. I think the only way you can have such a system in the United States is if the is if the government and the, and society, the social structure, was aimed in an anti imperialist humanitarian direction. There, the, the direction of the United States, the way the United States is organized as a country, from its inception, has never been for the good of anybody let alone its own people, except those people who are rich or those people who, who are perceived to be important. I would totally agree. And I would, like I said, I have, I have, um, uh, what you, um, I have shared with others in movements that we should advocate that um, the anti-war anti voter consciously not vote for Biden or Trump. That we should consciously disrupt the election. If it means someone so loses, so what? We're already losing right now. We want to show we can create a political poll by doing such a thing. We've talked about that on, on this program a few times. And I want to thank you, Abraham, for making that suggestion. I think it's an excellent suggestion. Yeah. 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 There's a way out of this, you know. Like a lot of people will right. just say, you know, oh, well, you know, like uh, this is the way it is, you know, and uh, it's, uh, it's a hopeless, hopeless situation that the United States of America has a military machine that is um, that spends more money than the, the next 20 countries in the world, you know, on their own military budgets. And the U.S. continues to do so. They even, you know, stole the, um, the um, state savings of Russia 
in various you know western banks amounting to 300 billion dollars and they've confiscated confiscated this 300 billion dollars gold basically in swiss and u.s banks and they're using it you know to wage the war in ukraine the money that they're allocating for the ukraine doesn't come from the united states of america it's coming from the looted gold you know of the uh, uh russian federation this 300 billion is being used and they spent, you know, already, you know, like about 150 billion. And they figure that they're going to spend the rest of it, you know, on a prolonged war, you know, to weaken the uh, Russian Federation. Well, and it continues well. on, goes on and on. And now France has, you know, uh, you know, talked about, you know, bringing troops into their, into the Ukraine uh, on the other side of the Danube, uh, supposedly, you know, to forestall uh, Russian advance into further into the Ukraine, but. Russia has not, you know, proposed, you know, advancing, you know, beyond the Donetsk and Lugansk regions. You know, they're not calling right. for the occupation of the rest of the Ukraine on the western part of the Danube River. No, that's not what it's all about. But if France and Europe, you know, are calling for the stationing of of NATO troops in Ukraine there, it's not just, you know, to form a border, you know, along the Danube River, you know, they're going to try to advance into the territories that have been liberated by the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Militia, uh, being supported by the Russian Red Army. So uh, how far the Western Europe is is uh, is willing to go with this war, you know, is, uh, is the question. And uh, if they can get away with it, you know, they're going to go right into Russia itself. And uh, outfit Ukraine, you know, with the missiles that can, that uh, are good for, you know, 500 kilometers or something, you know, to to attack Russian cities itself, to make, uh, in an attempt to turn the Russian public against uh, the uh, Russian government, which just won um, 80% uh, endorsement for the presidency of uh, Putin. So if they think that they can get away with it, they're going to try to do so. And they've got, you know, $300 billion to play with there that they just looted. So this is something to watch out for as well. I, I, want, I want to say that there is, there is some response that the Russian government has made towards the assets of companies in Russia re, in response to this. I don't have it available right now to share with you i can, I can find if, as we talk i can look on i i can research it but there, i have run across it on my telegram um readings that something has been proposed or is loud law that russia will be or is seriously considering uh seizing assets of those com companies of the countries that have been involved in this looting. So yeah. something is going to happen in response. And I, I yeah. do think that, I wouldn't say I'm troubled, but the fact that Europe and the United States won't give up on this leads me to think the war, and also listening to certain commentators that are kind of more privy to the to the history and the daily activities in, in the Russian Federation, I'm of the view that this war, if Europe if Europe and America continue to fund it, will go on even if there are no Ukrainians to fight the war. The fact that some European countries are foolish enough to want to send their troops into Ukraine to fight Russia indicates that they're willing to sacrifice not only their own their own um, flesh and blood. But also their their economies, let, because the money for fun, money for outfitting the soldiers, for equipping them with 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 gear, with weapons to transport them to heal, to put those in the hospital who 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 you know get their legs blown off or you know get some horrible injury, which all sides are suffering. And I really feel for any any soldier out there. Who's getting messed around and killed and maimed, dude? I mean, it's just not worth it to me. I'm sorry, it's not worth it because uh -huh. 20 years from now, 20 years from now, the world will be over, and in most countries, unfortunately, 
unless it's a really great country, you are gonna be forgotten forgotten is just how, how that turns out. But I do think that the Russian Federation is gonna do something about this confiscation of their assets. And I mean, our listeners and viewers should pause and think about it. What kind of country, what kind of values does that country and society and history allow to just take your stuff? I'm going to take your money. You don't like it too bad. The whole thing about sanctions that the U.S. Department of Treasury operates to target in countries, individuals who are against the foreign policy and political objectives and national security of the United States. Who gives them the right to do any of this? without the guns and the nuclear weapons and the political chicanery that they impose on a lot of the world. That's the only reason they get away with this nonsense, you know, because, I mean, it's just ridiculous. I think, I mean, and I've heard now that there are some countries in Africa in particular who are beginning to um, put their goal somewhere else. They're taking their goal and taking their foreign, their, their, their essential capital out of these Western banks. That's a smart move. Yeah. Well, everybody who has any sense of um, how how this thief called the United States operates ought to be thinking in that direction. Because they'll, they'll slap a sanction on you. They'll steal your money from your bank account like it ain't nothing. Like they blow their nose if they have a cold. No problem. And it's sad, and I'm totally opposed to it. And it's been very difficult to get this message out within the, within the imperialist system, it's the imperialist country itself. But we have to do a better job. This is not right. You can't just steal somebody's money because I don't like you. Because I say I can. That's theft, straight up. And it happened to you from a criminal, from a store, from a con artist, from a bank. You be, you'll be totally upset. So that's the way we should... That's the kind of solidarity we have to show to Russia and anybody else who's been put on these sanctions lists. It's just not right. I'm sorry I had to go on like that, but it just it, it bothers me a lot. Oh, this is really crucial, you know. Right? Uh, now China has put a lot of money into the U.S. economy. Yes, <laughs> and they're taking it back now. Good, Be because you know with all the trade that China has with the United States. Okay, they get paid in American dollars, of course. So what do they do with all these American dollars? You know, like there's very little in the United States of America that they can buy. You know, the United States has very little to offer China, you know, in terms of sales. So what do they do with all these American dollars? They invested them in U.S. Treasury bonds in order to make, you know, some sort of, you know, interest. And U.S. Treasury bonds will accept American dollars, you know, to buy American Treasury bonds, you know, so that works. So, but the you know, U.S., uh, you know, if if they let themselves, you know, uh, confiscate, you know, three hundred billion dollars of um, of Russian assets like that, <clears throat> that's a signal. And that means that they can compensate confiscate anybody else's, you know, savings as well. Okay, in particular, China's. So China knows this, you know, like it's a good, you know, like warning. So China's pulling its. Uh, uh, American dollars savings out of U.S. Treasury bonds and buying gold. <laughs> so that's one reason, you know, why why the price of gold is, you know, surging up ahead, you know, like it's up to $2,400, you know, an ounce. Ooh. Used to be like $35 Ooh. an ounce in the 60s, you know. Ooh. But the American dollar is is coming apart. It's, you know, like it's dissolving because it's solving itself, because they just keep on printing American dollars, you know, and devaluing itself as a result. So China is, you know, finding a way out of that trap, whereas Russia didn't. The Russia should have done that beforehand, you know, but they didn't. Yeah, They sort I, of, you I, know, I, had confidence yeah. in the capitalist system for some no, reason, you know. <laughs> no, no. That, that is, a, I, I'm, and I am a supporter. I want to give support, support, to where poor support is needed. And I, me sitting here on the couch in the United States on a chair, who am I to tell a, a country with nuclear weapons, the, the, one of the biggest countries, the biggest country in, in on, on the planet, how to run its affairs? I don't feel I'm, I don't feel I'm 
a person to person to do this. However, you can't trust a snake. You can't trust a poisonous rat. If a rat had that snake has shown it that it wants to bite you and it's been on the people, no. You have to miss me. I can't trust this dude here. I give my money, so I'm just saying, you know, whoever or however that was done, and the, Mr. Putin has agreed he was he was um, manipulated by An An Anza Merkel, you know, on, on the um, on the um, accord with on Ukraine. He, he admitted he was manipulated, and it's hard for a world leader to say that. So I, I really respect him for saying that. But you can't, I'm sorry, to trust Uncle Sam is just not too smart. Hmm. You know, just no, no. You better not trust him. It's better to not trust him and then to him to, and then him to show you, or he, to show you that that lack of trust was not warranted. But I think a lack of trust over your money, over your military resources, that you can't, I'm sorry, no, it, you can't do it. Don't don't do that. You will you will learn an object lesson about why the why we be called the United Snakes. Um, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, United yeah. Snakes. Okay, we got a couple of minutes left, uh, so there are conclusions to be made, and uh, the conclusion is that um, we're in a developing. Uh, world revolutionary pr prelude i think so there is a developing so. opposition that is becoming so strong that it be yes. can become you know a revolutionary movement on a world scale i think so and think uh, so. the united states is not backing down you know like they're you know right. still supporting you know uh the zionist regime against uh all authorities uh other than itself against the International Court of Justice against the International Criminal Court, against the United Nations General Assembly. I mean, what's left? The only thing, the only authority left after all of that is the United States of America. So, you know, is it a world dictatorship or not? You know, so it's not going no. to be a world dictatorship. I don't think, you know, the people of the world are going to accept this. No, I don't no think way, so. no how. I don't, so, think so. I don't think so, no. No, these yeah. are gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. how fast... This development occurs, I suppose, depends, you know, to some extent on uh, on uh, other things uh, as well. But uh, I think that uh, that's a conclusion that can be made, you know, that we have a developing potential for a transformation of, of, uh, of the established relations of power. And uh, that's something that... Uh, Mm. It's something to be looked forward to and something that we can contribute to. Uh, and we are contributing well to here and now. Well said. Well said, Abraham. Well said. I think you I think you said I think you said that earlier that needs to be said about that right there. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Let's see you next week. All right.